Well, 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 welcome back to The Megan Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've been watching any of my tattoo content lately, you will know that I'm a big fan of the show Ink Master. It's a reality competition show where tattoo artists go head to head to compete to become the next Ink Master and win $100,000. And it's been on since 2012. And today I wanna to go through all the seasons in as short and concise of a way as I can and talk about some of my favorite moments, my favorite uh, competitors, and rank the seasons from best to worst, in my opinion. The Megan Show. Ink Master premiered on Spike TV in 2012, hosted by Dave Navarro. Of course, he's a famous musician, but I knew him more as he dated Carmen Electra in the early 2000s. The judges were Oliver Peck and Chris Nunez, both a very talented tattoo artist, been in the business for many decades. Jumping right into the first season, this premiered in 2012, but I didn't watch it until many years later. I'll go through and tell you about the season I started watching live, and then from there on out, I watched all the seasons live after that. But it was only a few years ago when I watched the first several seasons that I missed. So this very first episode of this brand new television show started off with a bang. They had the contestants going in to a meat locker and tattooing pig carcasses. Disgusting. So because I didn't watch this season live when it was on air, I had already seen another tattoo show called Tattoo Nightmares where Tommy Helm was featured on that show. So by the time I watched his first season where Tommy was featured, I was already familiar with him. So I was rooting for him all along the way and he did do well throughout the whole season. A lot of the challenges were based around tattoo fundamentals like line work and composition and shading and things that tattoo artists need to know already. This season was good, but it didn't leave a super lasting impact on me. And you'll see later in my ranking where it falls, but Shane did pull out the win on this one, Tommy in second place. Um, really good season overall. Let's move on to season two. Season two kicked off and they took them to a morgue for their first episode. I think this is all for shock factor and thankfully they did not tattoo dead bodies. So they just tattooed mannequins on this first one. But this season really brought in the rise of female tattooers. You had Sarah Miller, Tattoo Baby. They became symbols on this show. Um, Sarah made it all the way to the end. She was a great tattoo artist. They made a huge deal about her appearance on the finale and how good she looked. And it was just one of the many, many examples of sexism and misogyny that you will see throughout this show. So that is unfortunate. Sarah was a very talented tattoo artist and did not deserve all of that weird behavior that was sent her way. Tattoo Baby, um, she was an icon. She started on this season. She did come back for season three, and you'll see that throughout the series. They like bringing back old contestants or contestants that fans love, so that happens a lot as we go on, and Tattoo Baby was the first one to get brought back. Notable season two contestant Clint Cummings did great on the show. He did unfortunately pass away from cancer a few years later, so rest in peace to Clint. While Sarah did make it to the finale, they did crown Steve Teft the second Ink Master. I don't think they were ready to give the title to a woman just yet. So Steve ends up the winner of season two. Season three kicked off with another shock value first episode. They had the artist tattooing in a prison. <laughs> they had them literally in the jail cells uh, doing tattoos for that first episode. But later in the episode, we find out that these uh, people that they tattooed were ex-convicts um, and not currently in prison. Uh, so that was just another shock value way to kick off the season. We bring back Tattoo Baby, Jimmy Litwalk, the couple of contestants that I really enjoyed throughout this season. One episode, they went to Coney Island and tattooed people's eyelids. I literally cannot imagine that thin, thin skin. No. I love Joey Hamilton. He ended up being the winner. I was rooting for him the whole time. This was one of the first seasons where I was rooting for the winner throughout the whole season. Uh, he was a well-deserved winner. Season four will definitely go down as one of the best of all time. I don't think I'm the only one that would think that. This season was stacked with extremely talented artists like Maddie, Sausage, Scott Marshall, Halo. I mean, there were so many great, great talents this season. They had challenges like tattooing twins to match exactly. They had an X-Men challenge where Hugh Jackman actually came 
by and looked at their tattoos and there were some really, really great ones on that day. There were some big blow up drama moments like Kyle Dunbar who came back from season three. At the finale of season three, he won a chance to come back to season four and he did and he definitely made a lasting mark. Um, he was beefing with Chris Nunez throughout the season. Uh, he felt that Nunez was giving him too harsh critiques and Kyle was literally trying to fight him at one point, physically fight him and production had to like separate him. He ended up getting disqualified. It was a whole thing, but boy, that was some juicy drama. The finalists were absolutely neck and neck throughout the whole season. Uh, this season, you really didn't know who it was gonna go to um, before the finale. I mean, they, all of them, even the top four, all of them were very, very qualified and talented and you just didn't know who was gonna win. Scott Marshall ends up pulling out the win. He becomes the fourth Ink Master, but unfortunately just about a year after the season, he passed away. Super, super sad story. Um, he was so young, definitely a sad story for him. Uh, you'd hate to see someone pass away at such an early age. Ink Master season five, Rivals. This is the first season that had a theme. This was all about rivals. So we brought back a few people from past seasons, but the rest were new people and they all had different drama, little um, kind of made up drama reasons why they were rivals. But this is also the first time we see an iconic contestant from Ink Master that goes on for many years, Clean Rock One. One of their challenges was tattooing skulls on people's heads. Can you imagine? I mean, that has gotta be one of the most painful places you can get a tattoo and they, people were getting their heads blasted, huge tattoos on the head. I just simply cannot imagine, but a lot of these tattoos turned out awesome. Clean Rock One definitely carried this season, in my opinion, he won so many of the challenges. He was destined to win, but he comes in second place to Jason Clay Dunn, who I don't even know how he made it to the finale. I mean, good tattoo artist, but Clean was clearly better than him, and it is wild that he didn't win, but I think this might have been one that uh, Clean didn't uh, follow the, the prompt exactly in the finale, and the judges ended up going with Jason Clay Dunn for the fifth Ink Master. Season six, Master versus Apprentice. I like this theme. You had uh, tattoo artists who had been in the business so many years versus their apprentices who are newer to tattooing. So we had a lot of interesting pairings for this season. We had returning artist Craig from season three. We had uh, great combos like Matt and Katie and Cruzman and Duffy. Uh, they were some people I was rooting for throughout the whole season. Chris Blinston and Tyler, Chris Mr. Overalls and cutie little Tyler. I love Tyler. He was so cute and I was rooting for him throughout the season. A lot of the challenges were based around tattoo fundamentals, adaptability, legibility, line work, shading, really making sure these artists were proficient at each of these really important steps of being a great tattoo artist. They had a couple interesting challenges like the trash polka challenge. That's a style I'd never heard of until watching uh, Ink Master where it's a lot of bold black and red. They also had a challenge where they had to recreate fine art pieces like classic paintings into tattoos and it's just amazing what these artists can do. I mean no matter how people get eliminated, um, I mean to even make it to Ink Master and show your art, I mean it's commendable. I mean I commend all of these artists for going through the gauntlet of being on this insane TV show but also showcasing their real real talent. So shout out to everybody that's ever been on the show. You're awesome. So for me, Dave Cruzman was a clear winner throughout the season. I think it was well-deserved and Dave Cruzman becomes the sixth Ink Master. Now we are on to season seven. This is the first one I watched live in 2016. I was at college and I was watching this one week to week, nail biting to see who would win all along the way. So what was interesting about this season is the theme was revenge. So they were bringing veteran artists back each week and these were people I wasn't familiar with yet because I hadn't watched seasons one through six in real time. So they were bringing back who were iconic contestants from those seasons. But for me at that time, it was the first time I'd seen them. So this one had the introduction of Anthony Michaels, who was a newer tattoo artist at that time. And he was doing great throughout the season. We saw Clean Rock One being brought back for the second time. We had iconic contestants like Maddie and Sausage, Jimmy Litwalk, Sarah Miller, Jesse Smith. They had a flash challenge where they had to make 
art out of trash and had a light reflecting on it to show the shape of what they made and it ended out being clean and Anthony in the finale and clean yet again uh, was did not get the win Anthony won I think it was well deserved though but it was at the time kind of shocking you know Anthony was a newer artist clean had been in the business multiple decades at that point but Anthony squeezes out the win and I was happy for him and so Anthony becomes the seventh ink master season eight's theme was Peck versus Nunez they made teams and they started out with like 30 artists and had this tattoo convention where they made them do you know all kinds of back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back tattooing and they whittled it down to about 18 contestants this season is the rise of this big group of female tattooers who became industry icons Ryan Ashley, Kelly Doty, Gia Rose, Nikki Simpson. They were truly trailblazers and icons and I love them for it. They got their own spin-off show, Ink Master Angels, and they actually had um, people, some people who won certain episodes of Angels got to then appear on a season of Ink Master. So that was a great strategy. I love the way they did that. And Kelly Doty with her stop tattooing when she would shake her head so iconic we see Gion and Ryan Ashley in the finale Gion was a great artist throughout the season Ryan excellent with her you know beadwork her specialty um, beautiful tattooing and we see Ryan Ashley becomes the first female ink master absolutely well deserved Brian gets the win. Season 9, Shop Wars. I really liked this theme. We had pairs of two for each shop. We had many returning artists, but we also had some new artists, DJ Tamby, who we will see many times in the next few years. We had the return of Matt and Katie from the Master Apprentice season. We had Clean Rock One again. This is his third appearance with one of his shop mates. And we had some new artists from Allegory Arts and Artistic Skin Design Shop. Both of those teams I was rooting for throughout the whole season. We had Clean famously getting eliminated for his backwards thumb tattoo for that Buddha tattoo. They had a challenge where they had to inject ink into bubble wrap for a flash challenge. They had work of art tattoos, which was similar to season six, where they recreated fine art tattoos. So it ends out that Old Town Ink wins with DJ and Bubba. I personally didn't love that choice. I mean, they're talented artists, but again, I was rooting for some other ones throughout that season, but DJ gets his first win. Season 10, Return of the Masters. We had DJ returning, who had just won the previous season, Anthony, winner of season seven, and Steve of season two became coaches for this season. This is also the year where we transition away from Spike TV and go to Paramount Network, so this is during that transition. One challenge was pixelated tattoos. A few great works came from that. Jason took the win on that episode. Josh Payne ends up being the 10th Ink Master and Coach DJ wins the coaches kind of tournament that was going on. So DJ ends up winning two years in a row. Really crazy. Season 11 grudge match between Clean and Christian. Again, we see Clean for about the fourth time competing on the show and Christian from one of the past seasons. They go head to head and they form teams. And this season was one of my favorites. We see Tony who competed on Ink Master Angels and won a spot on season 11. They had a flash challenge where they did graffiti on shipping containers. We see the introduction of Jimmy Snaz who was such an interesting character. I was rooting for him. They did some Japanese temple tattoos at one point. Tony pulls out the win. It was well deserved and Clean Rock One gets his first win and I loved it. That is what made this season one of the best for me. I was rooting for Clean and Tony the whole time. So love this one. Season 12, Battle of the Sexes. So we had two groups of all men and all women competing and we had new veteran artists coming back to coach them each week. So there was a lot going on this season. Um, I was rooting, of course, for all the women. Um, there were a few men that I really loved, Pawn and Creepy Jason. The entire cast was great on this season. Um, and it was fun to see a lot of the veteran artists coming back to give them tips along the way. They had some great challenges like neo-traditional animals, beautiful artwork there. I was rooting for Danny Ryan the whole time. She made it to the finale, also Laura. But Laura pulls out the win, becoming the second female ink master. Season 13, Turf Wars. We've reached my absolute favorite season. 
I loved the cast of this season, just absolutely stacked again, similar to season four, so many talented artists. So we had four regions. We had East, West, South, and Midwest. And each of those teams, there was a returning artist on each team. So for East, we had Jimmy Snaz from season 11. For West, we had Angel Rose from season 11. For Midwest, we had Frank Reddy from season 10, who I was rooting for for season 10. For South, we had Jason Elliott from season 10, who was a great contestant in that season. And on each team, there were great new artists, particularly on the West team. Um, there was Bob and Hiram with Angel Rose, who were excellent artists. On the East, I was rooting for Jessa. She was a beautiful girl and great artist. So I was rooting for her. They had a really sweet flash challenge where they painted helmets for people and they painted beautiful designs for these folks. And I thought that was a really sweet challenge. There were so many great tattoos from this entire season, so many great artists. But the craziest part is that this season happened during COVID, the beginning of COVID. And it ended up being that they did not pick a winner. We had Jimmy Snaz, Angel, and Bob in the finale, and a winner was not chosen. They, I think they went and did their master canvases, but because of COVID, again, early 2020, they did not get to have a live finale to show off their work. Absolutely crazy, and it just stopped. Everything just stopped, and the season just came to a halt. This is also the very last normal season with your traditional judges, Dave, Chris, and Oliver Peck. Um, after this, things definitely changed. So kind of right after season 13 fizzled out and we didn't get to choose a winner, some controversy came out, some old photos of Oliver Peck in blackface came out, and Ink Master kind of went into limbo. Uh, we did not know if it was going to come back and if it would come back, how different it would be because they kind of scrapped all of the original judges and hosts. In 2022, Ink Master came back on Paramount Network with a whole new band of judges and hosts. They ended up choosing Joel Madden as host from Good Charlotte. Um, I loved Good Charlotte as a kid, and so it was kind of random that he was chosen as host, but kind of made sense. You know, he's a very tattooed person, so good for him for landing that gig. But then they had new judges. Ryan Ashley, of course, from season eight winner, first female winner. Nico Hurtado, famous tattoo artist. And also Ami James, very well-respected artist in the industry as the new panel of judges. For the cast, they brought back a lot of all-star contestants from past seasons. Creepy Jason, Pawn, Holly Marie. They had Gion. Somehow Dave Navarro got himself involved into this wacko season and they had him as the master of chaos, they called him. So he was out here looking like he was on Zoom. They would fly down a TV screen with Dave's face on it and he would come in with a twist. They, the judges and hosts would tell them the challenge and here comes Dave coming down on the TV screen to tell them a twist to whatever the challenge was. This season was all over the place. The judging was all over the place and the challenges were insane. They would do mashups of ideas and I just didn't like it. I mean, all the original seasons, they would, like I've mentioned, they did a lot about the fundamentals. I mean, a lot of the challenges were kind of straightforward, very tattoo focused. For this season 14, they were just throwing them crazy ideas just for the fun of it maybe or for the shock factor, I don't know. They had a pinup animals challenge. I mean, some of the art was awesome what came out, but just these ideas, I can't imagine being the artist in this position, just getting thrown the most insane ideas for this season. They then threw in DJ and Anthony to return later in the season to then take people's spots. Things that Oliver Peck and Chris Nunez would point out in earlier seasons was absolutely overlooked in this season. Bob was doing great this season. Hiram got eliminated early. I didn't agree with that. There was just a lot going on this season. And so then DJ, who has already won a few times, comes in here and steals the show. And so then the finale is DJ and Gion, who Gion was great throughout the whole season, was rooting for him. And it ends up DJ gets the win, just scoops out from under everybody else and DJ Tambi wins yet again. I'm like, what is going on? Then for season 15, they tried to get back to some normal seat and, but, and they changed up the judges panel a little bit. So 
here comes DJ once again. He replaces Ami James to become another judge. So it's still Joel Madden as host. We still have Ryan Ashley as a judge and Nico Hurtado as judge. And now DJ is the third judge. So the other interesting thing about these newer seasons is Joel Madden gets a vote. So um, now there's four people, you know, in the first 13 seasons, it was Dave and two judges. But Dave did get a vote and he was kind of the, the tiebreaker vote. Well, now it's four people, Joel, Ryan, Nico, and DJ, and Joel gets a vote too. And so it makes it, it's an even number now. So that kind of comes up a few times um, throughout the season that the, the way the judging works out is a little interesting. But this season had great contestants, Bobby, Freddie, John Mesa, great artists, a lot of other great artists throughout this season as well. They immediately picked teams in the first kind of episode, I think. And the way they picked teams based on like who did the best in that first episode from blind, um, I think they did blind judging. And so the way it worked out was they, the judges picked like all the best artists on one team and it was just so uh, mismatched and misbalanced. And that comes up, production realizes their mistake there in a few episodes and they reshuffle the teams. And it's just like, it's kind of getting to a point where it's predictable. I mean, you can kind of predict what's going to happen. From the first episode, you could already predict that Bobby, Freddie, and John could make it to the finale. I mean, should make it to the finale. Another interesting thing was Freddie was really sticking to his style where he kind of meshes multiple styles into his tattooing. And if this was an older season, Chris Nunez and Oliver Peck would have knocked him down a peg multiple times for not wanting to branch out from his style. I mean, Freddie had to branch out maybe a couple of times, but there were more times than not that he stuck to his style no matter what the challenge was asking. So I thought that was interesting that these new judges didn't point that out. Maybe they'd, they wanted it to be that way. They wanted to change how the judging works, but I just know that the old school way, um, he would not have gotten away with a lot of the stuff he was doing. Bobby, Freddie, and John were in the finale as expected, and I was kind of expecting a Bobby and John final too. Well, last minute they eliminate John as the final three, so then it's Bobby and Freddie, and I was shocked because I was like, are they really about to let Freddie win when he did his style the whole season? I just, I was so shocked, but they ended up, Bobby wins season 15, which was well-deserved. I. You could tell writing was on the wall from the first episode for me. Bobby was the winner for season 15. There are so many times where there is unnecessary drama and that's just because it's reality TV. It's kind of built in to the structure and a lot of that drama you just know has to be manufactured and sometimes I will try to skip over it when I'm, you know, watching it on uh, streaming. I'm, I try to skip over some of those like drama scenes. It's just silly. I am interested in the tattooing competition part of it. So the whole series has a lot of silly drama, a lot of insane flash challenges like I was mentioning that have nothing to do with tattooing, just really putting these contestants through a gauntlet, mental warfare. I did learn a lot about tattoo styles throughout watching this season. I mentioned in previous tattoo videos that Ink Master really got me into loving and appreciating American traditional style. So I have multiple American traditional tattoos and I attribute my appreciation and knowledge about it from Ink Master. I mean, you really learn a lot about tattoo history and about different tattoo styles and I appreciate the show for that. I thought it was really fun how they brought so many different contestants back and back and back again throughout the series. They really solidified a lot of icons like Clean Rock One, Absolute Icon, DJ and Icon, a little too much hype in my opinion, but definitely uh, Ink Master Icon, um, so many others that really left an indelible mark on this series. At number one, I think you may be able to guess my favorite season is season 13, Turf Wars. I absolutely loved this season. The cast was absolutely stacked and this was so memorable with the COVID year where they didn't pick a winner. I love this season the most. At number two is season 12. Again, Battle of the Sexes, so many great artists from this season where they brought back veterans too to be coaches. This was just a really lovable season. A lot of lovable characters from this one. 
At number three is season 11, Tony and Clean get his first win. Um, love this season, really memorable. Number four is season six, the Master versus Apprentice year. I loved this season. This was one that I watched later, but definitely made it into my top five. And at number five is season four. I mean, you cannot deny the how iconic season four was. Again, this is an early season that had so many talented artists. So it made my top five. So for the rest of them, I'll just go quickly. At number six, season 10. Number seven, season eight. Number eight, season nine. <laughs> number nine, season seven. Number 10, season three. Number 11, season 15. Number 12, season two. Number 13, season one. Number 14, season five. And number 15, the worst season in my opinion was season 14. They were so wild for that. They should be ashamed, just joking, but that season was beyond wild doing the most. So that is my official ranking. I'm curious to hear what you think about Ink Master. If you're a fan, how you would rank the seasons. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know down below your thoughts about Ink Master. If you're a big fan, a passive fan, or if you don't like it at all, just let me know down below. And I would really appreciate if you gave this video a like and if you subscribe to my channel, it really helps me out a lot. But I thank you so much for watching The Megan Show. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.